Um, let's take a step back, if we will, and I'm, I'm going to cover this a little bit different order than I did previous semesters, because I think we're having at least a little bit of momentum dealing with server-side scripting stuff. All right, we've been um, seeing server-side scripting, and, and we went from simply interjecting some server-side scripting into our page to make it responsive, and we, we had indicated that the rationale for that was that um, we, could, we could gear the content and not just the appearance to uh, either a mobile or a uh, full version of the site. The one drawback with doing everything via CSS is we had to send all the content down, and then the CSS would just choose what to display. Whereas we said, hey, if we put some server-side scripting on, we can go and we can customize a page based on whether it's a mobile or a full version. Right? So that, that was our starting point with that. Our second point was to say, well, we can, the other thing we can do with that is we can redirect people to different sites depending on the user agent. So we can look at the user agent and we can determine using a script that someone else wrote because it's a gigantic script because there's all kinds of mobile devices out there, right? And we can direct the user to wherever we want to send them based on whether it's mobile or not. Now, the next thing we're going to cover goes something like this. The thought goes something like this. If we look at the user agent string, there's actually a lot of information in it, all right? More so than just whether it is a mobile device or a desktop device. Let's look at, I have a, I have a, a, a little test page out on one of our development servers that I'll create an account for everyone on um, probably this week. Well, let's look at a little test page. All right. So I go here and I will go cissql.lorraineccc.edu slash cissq268 slash test.php. All right. This is the user agent. And if we look closely at it, there's more in this user agent than simply that we're on a, a desktop machine, all right? And we can gather more information from it if we wanted to, all right? For example, you know, this tells us that we're on some Windows base. Uh, interesting that it is identified as Windows NT, but it is telling us that we're on Windows, and we are on a version of Chrome. All right. So it tells us more than simply the binary, are you mobile, are you desktop? You know, and if we look at this, if we look at all the user agents, if we look at some of our sample code from um, a few times ago, if you remember this, where we grab the user agent and examine it, there's a whole bunch of user agents that we're looking for. And there's information, therefore that implies that, there, that there's more information in that user agent string than simply if we're on the mobile device or not. We can gather more information like what mobile device are we on? What is our device? And then maybe we can use that if we know which devices have which capabilities. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to um, that web page, and I encourage you, if you have a mobile device with you now, the only time ever a teacher is going to tell you to pull out your mobile device and play with it, all right, so enjoy it while you can, go to this URL, CISS. CISSQL.LorraineCCC.edu, CISS268 slash test.php. I have a couple mobile devices here, and we can look at them. I'll pull it up, or actually I've already pulled it up, but then I'll pass it around. This knows that I am running Android, which I am, and if we look close, and I'll pass this around, 
There's something in here that indicates that I'm on an LG device, which this is an LG phone. All right. So it's smart enough to know that I'm on the Android operating system and I'm, I'm on an LG phone. All right. And then there's some other information after that, probably something like the model number or anything, or, or something along those lines. If I pull up this one, this is a Samsung Galaxy tablet. And if we're going to look at this, if we look at the user agent, it also knows that we're on an Android variant. And there was a version of Android that we're on, interestingly enough. And GT, I'm going to assume, stands for Galaxy Tablet. And if you look, there's some information after it, P1010, which probably means something. Finally, we got the big old Android <coughs> Galaxy, Samsung Galaxy tablet. Then if we look at this, it also identifies that we're on Android, different version of Android. And if GT probably stands for Galaxy tablet. And there's a different number after that, probably because this is a different model than that one. All right. So, did anyone pull up this page? What did you got? What do you have? I have an iPhone, so it says uh, Mozilla 5.0, Apple WebKit, iPhone, CPU, iPhone, and even gives you the operating system, 7.0.2. Okay. Uh, like Mac OS X, uh, 7.0 Mobile, Safari, and then the ID just says Apple, iPhone, brand name, Apple, model name, iPhone, marketing name. Markup, HTML, Web 4.0, gives a resolution. Okay, so it knows that you're on an iPhone, and it knows more information about that. It knows what version of iPhone that you're on, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Anyone else pull up their mobile device? All right. So, the point is, is our user agent, which we've used so far in a very clumsy way. Are you a mobile device or not? Actually, there's more information in that user agent if we just know how to use it. All right? If we can just pluck out the stuff in there that's relevant. That's a big task, right? Just like coming up with this giant 2,000 characters worth of string was a big task. All right? Too much for one web developer to do on their own. Right? It's the same for everyone. Everyone's user agents get flagged the same way. So if someone does it, they can make a little product or a little piece of code that we can use, a little database, if you will, that takes this user agent and figures out more information about the device. Then we can write some things. We can, we can do a finer degree of control. Yes? I guess I look at it kind of like a language, like is there a, a book that says, I guess what I'm asking, can it look a bunch of different ways? Aside from just like the, the variables put in, is it a formula that's always the same and the variables are different, or is it a string of stuff that will look different every time? That is a good question. Um, the good news is, that's a good question. I would imagine it's more towards the latter that you said, that it's going to have a certain structure, all right? But the good news is we don't have to worry about that because someone has done that for us, and we'll talk about that in a minute. How about here? You're showing, it's showing like Apple WebKit. It's showing Safari. Uh, well, because, because this is a Chrome browser, which is built off of, of the Apple WebKit right. and Mozilla and so on. So yeah, it's, it's just saying that information. But it, it will know, like, because like you were saying, this would come in handy, like, if you're, I know sometimes you go to websites and it's like, you know, download for Chrome right. Store or download right. for Windows Store. You know? Exactly. Okay. So, so yeah, you can, you can pull that out. Right, okay. Now, so the question is then, is figuring out the, 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 the kind of the question.
question behind your question is how are we going to figure this mess out? All right. And this is where there actually is a tool available that we can download and it's called Werfel. All right. Let's and Werfel is, I did not know this until 15 minutes ago. I probably knew it at one point, right? And I probably won't remember it 15 minutes from now. All right, so this is like the rare half hour out of the year, out of the semester, and I know what WERFL stands for because I just looked it up. WERFL stands for Wireless Universal Resource File. I don't know, they didn't like WERF by itself, so they took the L from the file as well and made it WERFL. I kind of like Worf better, all right? But maybe that would confuse people with Worf from Star Trek, and yeah, people just get all messed up. So what is Worfle? Worfle is a database. And when I say database, I don't mean like an access or a SQL server or a MySQL. It's sort of like an XML file database. So it's, it's an XML file resource and an API. What is an API? An API is sort of our, as web developers, hooks into that database. So we don't have to know a lot of coding. We're going to have a set of functions that we can call to initialize certain variables and to get some information out. All right? So that's what the Werfel database is. So, for this to work, it has to be installed on a web server. And that's why I'm going to give you counts to LC's web server, because it's a little bit of a pain getting it downloaded and installed and all that. You're certainly welcome to try. I'm not going to uh, dissuade you from that. But, for this to work, this is what you need. You need the client making the request, which we always have. You have the internet. I can't believe I just said you had the internet and you threw it out. You have your web server on which are installed a set of Werfel files. And that includes some XML files and some other files. We'll take a look at that probably if I, if I can access those files from here. When a request comes in, as we know, it comes in with a user agent. That user agent gets sent to the server. The server then can call a function. There's a workflow function to look up that user agent. So that's why I said we don't have to worry about that, right? We just need to know the function to call and give it the proper, um, give it the user agent that we've been given. What do we get back? We get back a Werfel object that our server-side code can ask questions of. All right. Well, what kind of questions can it ask? <clears throat> it can ask things like, do you have a telephone? All right. That's a reasonable question. All right. Do you have a telephone? Yes or no? What is your operating system? Are you Android? Are you iOS? And so on. It can ask the question, um, what is your maximum screen width? It can ask, are you a tablet? All right. So it can ask a number of different questions of this object. And guess what? We can use that to customize our page, just like we use that to customize the page um, in our earlier examples. The difference being is we have a finer level of granularity. In other words,
or it's not going to be a binary mobile full version. It's going to be, we can check to see if it's a mobile device. We can check to see if it's a tablet. We can check to see if it has a phone. We can check the screen with, and so on and so on and so forth. So we can check all these things, and we can customize a page for more specific characteristics of the client than simply is it mobile or not. So this is really the same thing we were doing, just kicked up a notch. All right? Now, what I want to do is I want to show you another example. All right, so we'll look at um, this example, and we will then look at the code that produced it. All right? And it's the example I've been alluding to for a while in this class. And it is looking at the device and determining whether it's a phone or not. And if it's a phone, have a click me to dial link. If it's not, then have just a regular text message. So let's see if I can find that guy. <coughs> All right, here we go. Hit it right off. I'm on a desktop machine. This is not a telephone. Therefore, this has text that says, call me at 366-4796, which is not my home phone. So don't call it <laughs> 3 in the morning you know, with a prank call. If you do, you'll get my office, right? And I ain't going to be there, so it doesn't matter. And really, you shouldn't be doing that. You guys are, you know, you guys shouldn't be doing that. Oh, let me get my phone phone, because none of those... None of those mobile devices actually have uh, like a, a contract, so they, they don't really work as phones. I guess we could use them. We, we could use it to demonstrate, anyhow. No, we can't. Let me go get my phone, my real phone. So I'm going to go up there in my tongue intermission music, all right, for, <laughs> for two minutes. that I had, C-I-S-S-Q-L dot, this one I'm not going to pass around because I want folks like texting people on my phone. <laughs> Come on, tell me you didn't think of doing that. <laughs> yeah, really. And this identifies that this, in fact, is Android Motorola Droid DX, or Droid X2, rather, and so on. So let me go to this page, which is the same thing except example 232, or example uh, PHP after it. And that's why out of mine works. I said example 232 because CI, probably because CIS is 32, 232 is where we study PHP more detail. So I see PHP and it, it translates to 232 in my head. Either that or I just lost my mind. Okay, so.
So now we go and do this. It comes up instead with a hyperlink that says call me. All right, doesn't have my text number. It's the exact same URL. I press it, and boom, opens up my phone, and I'm calling my office. And you'll get my voicemail message. Maybe. Nothing up my sleeve. I should have left myself a message so and, and then I wouldn't think about it and I'd get in tomorrow and see I have a message and it would scare me and, and I realize it's wrong. <laughs> 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 I told the first day of class. Yeah, I was gonna say that yeah, that should be my voicemail message. Hi, right, this is Mike. Please don't call me. Don't leave a message. Send me email instead. You will get a quicker answer. Alright, at any rate, we've seen how this refines it just a little bit further. And I'm curious now what would happen if I try to access that page from here. Interestingly enough, it comes with a call link. That just, I guess, shows that Warful itself is not infallible. All right. Now, let's look at how we do this. All right. Because I wanted to make sure you understood on a conceptual level what we're doing first. All right? And then we'll get into the details of exactly how, how you do it. So I'm going to give sort of an overview of like what you need to make this work. And then we can look at a more thorough coverage of um, the topics and what the capabilities are. All right. To do that, I'm going to bring down these pages from the web server. So let me log on to the web server and My fingers must not be working because I swear I typed the same password in three times and it didn't work the first two and then it did. So, all right. Let me bring down the source code for this. Now, this, this source code wouldn't work if I ran it on this web server because this web server doesn't have Warful installed. And we'll look what it takes to install Warful in a minute here. So let's go and bring it up. Um, actually, I'm going to lap off some of the code that's not really needed because I have some redundant code in here. All right, let's see what we have. First of all, remember I said we had to point to um, some files, and we had to download and install some files. That file is in the folder, Warful config, or it, I'm sorry, it's not in the folder. It's in the um, 
the name of the file is Werfel config standards.php. We'll take a look at that file in a minute here. In essence, that's a configuration file. That's what tells this page where to find the Werfel database and the Werfel API and all that stuff. So this line here connects this page to the, the, the Werfel stuff. That is a Werfel database and the API. The second line, line five, is an, an initialization procedure. And what this is doing is this is making an object, for those of you with a programming background, that we're going to use to call functions on to find out information um, from the Werfel database. So consider this to be our code-like pipeline to the, to the Werfel database. It's an object. Where have we heard object before? Document object model, when we talk about JavaScript, all right? And same kind of thing, it's an object, and objects typically have properties and methods associated with them. By methods, I mean functions. So when we do this, we now have a pipeline to the Werfel database that we can ask questions. Remember I showed there on the board that we get a Werfel object, we can ask questions of that. All right. What we do here is, and we probably could get rid of this line too, is we are asking our Werfel pipeline <coughs> to find out what is the device associated with that request. Try this and see if it works. Get rid of some, getting rid of some superfluous lines. Now, what we can do then is we can ask a series of true or false questions of that device object. So this requesting device is an object. If you remember, any time when we talk about an object, we're talking about a, a chunk of software that represents something real. Okay? In the, the, the JavaScript DOM, the document object model, the thing that we're representing that's real is the stuff on the web page. All right? It's the stuff on the web page the images and the divs and the <coughs> links and all that kind of stuff. Here, this object is a software representation of the device that's being used as a client. All right? So, we are asking the user, all right? Oh, I'm sorry, we're asking Werfel to grab a device object for the device that made the request. We can then ask some questions of that device, which is what we're doing here. Yes? Okay. I don't have a programming background, but I think what I hear you saying is that you, that code essentially goes into that file where it's parsed and it produces an object, which is like uh, essentially, a, it's like the phone. It's a, it's a software representation of the okay. phone and its capabilities, right? Like Star Wars language, it's like a hologram, more or less. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. yeah. Hologram, it is live. 